Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So I'm very excited about this topic today, which is how to create more love in your relationship. I have 10 tips for you, so you go ahead and stay tuned as usual. family thank you so much for coming on back so the 10 tips that I have for you to create and show my love in your relationship the very first one is to use terms of endearments now these are what I like to think about which is the pet names that you use specifically for your partner your spouse your boo uh, whatever that pet name is it could be something that you are embarrassed that they call you but when they are mad at you and they don't call you this word, you like, mm. or you, you basically know that they mad at you because they might be using your full name versus, hey, boo, X, Y, and Z, or hey, buddy, what, I don't know, buddy's ugly, but I'm just saying, whatever the term of endearment that your partner's using for you, you definitely know that they, you know, that the, the mood has changed when they start to use your full name instead of your pet name okay that's all I'm saying so use more uh, terms of endearment to create more love with your partner the second thing to think about is being more supportive during a crisis it could be something that's going on with one of his close family members or just one of his family members in general but be more supportive just be there for them ask them specifically what you want them to do because some people don't want you to do anything they just want you to be in their company so be supportive and find out what being supportive is to them specifically during the crisis time the third thing, yes, this is number three, allow for private time. We specifically call this, especially in the States, me time. So allow your partner to have private time. They will allow for you to have private time. So you can just pretty much do what you want to do. Let your hair down and there are no expectations for you to take care of or do anything that you don't want to do in those few hours or day or whatever it is so take your me time for yourself and allow for your partner to get their me time as well the fourth thing that you could do to create more love in your relationship is to play with your partner a lot more play with them have fun with them laugh and joke and just have you guys you know when, when you see partners that are out there or people that are in relationships out there and they kind of have their own little language this is where some of this little language is picked up at because they found time to have fun with each other and it might have been something that they seen on a movie or one word that they use all the time but they know what's going on what it actually means so have more fun with your partner so you too can create your own language <laughs> When you're on the outside looking in, you might be like, oh, here we go with this, or that's too mushy. But when you're the person that's in that situation, it really does create more love towards your partner. And you really do feel closer with your partner because it's y'all own little language, y'all own little world with each other. Number five, the fifth way to create more love in your relationship with your partner is to simply give them a foot rub, give them a back rub, give them some type of skin to skin contact. Um, I really love when my now husband, yay husband, husband, when he actually rubs my feet or gives me a shoulder massage. Actually, we haven't done a shoulder massage in a little while, but he just rubbed my feet the other day and I totally, totally love it. Um, because I feel special, I feel cared for, I actually feel like he wants to please me in the moment when he's actually doing it. Even though sometimes he don't be wanting to do it at all and he think that I come to him at the wrong time sometimes to do it, but because he does actually go ahead and massage my feet or neck rub, back rub, whatever it is that I'm asking for, I really do feel cared for when he's doing it. So I'm very appreciative and of course I let him know that I am, but it just creates more love in your relationship when you specifically touch your partner in the ways that you know that they like it. Number six. This one, I actually can't remember where I got it from. I know it was an article, but I didn't write it down. Anyway, um, I really like this one, which is to keep a 
five to one ratio of good versus bad. So five things good versus one thing bad. And if you keep that ratio or even higher, um, then your relationship will uh, feel good. You will definitely feel love with your partner and they'll feel love with you because if you could think about the one bad thing, right? Because most of the time that's what comes to the forefront of your brain, especially when you get ticked off at your partner, you're thinking about the bad. But you have a tendency to let your nerves and everything come back down, to settle back down. If you have more, which is the five, if you have more good times versus the bad times, you'll find a way to make things right so you can get back on good uh, a good scale, a good term with your partner just to feel those loving feelings again. So you again can start using those terms of endearment because when you get mad, most of the time you're not using the, 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 the pet name to them. Like I mentioned before, you usually start to use their full name, which is the signal, some wrong. <laughs> I know something wrong <laughs> when you're not calling me my pet name, right? Yeah. Something wrong. They might not voice it, but that's a little something that you could pick up on. When something is wrong with your partner and they start to use your full name, it's like, wait, wait a minute. Wait, he, he just called me Marshawn. Hold up. <laughs> Number seven. See your partner for who they truly are, not for the person that you want them to be, not for the person that you're hoping that they change into, and not for the person that you seen when you had on your rose-colored glasses. See them for who they truly are. And specifically, this is a, a prayer, seriously, a prayer that I used to pray to make sure, and every once in a while I still do it now, but I used to say this specific prayer to God, please take the rose-colored glasses off so I can see exactly what's there versus what I want to see. So that's just a little prayer. Maybe you can use it yourself. I do not mind. Go ahead. Obviously, I'll never know if you use it or not. However, that is something that I truly stood by for the longest time in order to make sure that I wasn't seeing the things that I just wanted to see because I wanted to be in a relationship. Because I never just wanted to be in a relationship. I always want to be in a healthy relationship. Healthy relationship. Does that mean that we're not going to have conflicts? No. But overall, I'm doing, I, I never thought about the 5 to 1 ratio. But I definitely know specifically that we have more good times than we do bad times. And that's, uh, it's, it's by choice. Because, you know, we all can go down a rabbit hole and start making things bad in our relationship intentionally just because we want to one up the other person or I don't want to say sorry today so I'm not or whatever it is we're holding on to all the grudges just because and not realizing that the more time that we do this the more and more distance that you are putting in between you and your partner and you're also opening up the door for other people other things to start to step into that space that distance and put their claws into your partner so keep the distance closed <laughs> and appreciate your partner more and more so you can create the love in your relationship. The eighth thing to think about when those fights do occur. Okay, come on. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here to mama. <laughs> when those fights do occur, try not to react. Try to take a step back, literally take a step back from it all so you can simmer down, number one. Try to take the emotional portion out of it as much as possible so you can truly see why the fight began in the first pet, in the first place. Because maybe it was something that you said, and I have to say, it's usually not what you said, it's usually how you said said thing to your partner on why they got the attitude with you, why the the conversation, i.e. argument went downhill, why nobody was listening to what what each other was saying, why the over talking of each other. You don't have to do none of that. So if you take a step back and think about why the fight went downhill, then you can come back and say, you know what, baby, uh, I'm sorry that X, Y, and Z happy. Here's why I was feeling the way that I was here and sorry that I was over talking you. Sorry. So, you know, whatever. Apologize for your part in it. And hopefully you can get the conversation going on so you both can understand what happened. 
why the fight happened, where it all went wrong. Because a lot of times it's misunderstandings and um, the things that we that we're not understanding. So we're taking it in and we're basically making up our own stories. And then you have to apologize for that portion of it. When if you just take a step back, do not react. You have a better chance of keeping things on an even keel and continuously moving the relationship forward instead of staying stuck or even moving backwards. The ninth thing to think about is to embrace the ordinary. Most people don't like to be in the uh, the to be in the mundaneness of the relationships. They think that it's always supposed to be these butterflies going or these um, these really expensive vacations or just always heighten, 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 heighten that or the relationship is not good. That's just not true. Most of us get into our day-to-day, -day, the routine, the mundaneness of the relationship. So just embrace it. Yes, you can notice that's what's going on and you can bring back some spice, some liveliness, some fun to your relationship, of course. But it's absolutely going to always go back to the mundaneness of the everyday, the routine, the making sure, getting the kids together, making sure that you're spending time with your spouse, making sure that the house is clean, doing the laundry. It's always going to be the mundaneness in relationships, period. So just embrace them. It's going to happen. I actually have a friend who is trying to make sure that her guy embraces the mundaneness because he always wants to run and go and go and go and she just want to relax on weekends and so she's she's learning how to express this more and more in the way that he can understand it because he's ready to go 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 and she just want to sit down somewhere <laughs> she want to experience the day-to-day -day, the simp simplistic things that happen in a relationship like watching a movie or like drinking coffee together or like sitting there talking but because they're always going 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 she's like man I, I just need to sit down I just need to sit down so again embrace the ordinary it's absolutely going to happen the tenth and final tip is to focus on giving love. Don't be selfish. Focus on your partner. And if your partner is focusing on you and you are focusing on your partner specifically about giving love instead of being selfish, then how can the relationship go wrong? It can't go wrong if both of you are making sure that your partner is feeling love, that you are making sure that you are embracing exactly what they want to do and how they feel, put yourself in their situation, and just making sure that you understand and actively act on their love language. You can't lose if you are focusing on giving love to your partner. So these are my 10 tips on how to create more love in your relationship. How did you like them? What did you think about any of them? Did any of them stand out? Are you going to actually incorporate any of these tips into your own relationship? And if you do, I would love to hear how your experiment is going to go. Even if it's a, a few weeks later, I would like for you to come back and say, you know what? I tried this X amount of time and this is actually what happened because these things will help all of us, not just me, not just you. These can help your friends. It can help your family members. So again, we can help to start decreasing that divorce rate because all of us are taking into the tips and tools and just other people around you are seeing that you're making an effort to change your relationship, to make it better, to bring all of this love into your relationship. And they too are going to want to know what you're doing. All right, if this is your very first time, here's I Love Me, Me, Me. Definitely go ahead and think about subscribing because here at I Love Me, 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 I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. So again, we can start to decrease that divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. I will see you again in a few days. Deuces.